your host Hepburn and you're listening to the Voiceless Speak Forever podcast, a true crime podcast dedicated to exposing the many misdeeds and abuses done to animals. And every week, I'll be covering a new animal abuse case. Tonight, a Peoria man is in jail accused of thoroughly and methodically beating a dog, but it was caught on video. It's Wednesday evening. I'm Tyler Lopez. And I'm Amber Priska. This video may be difficult to watch, but it's a big part of the reason that someone is now being accused and potentially held accountable. Paige Blanzi joins us in the studio with the disturbing details. Paige. The video was shared all over social media this week, but we've just learned it actually happened last month. We've taken some time with the edit, but even the blurred video we're about to share may be too graphic for some viewers. You can hear the howling cries from a dog as he's thrown against a wall in Dunlap. There is a kick. The dog flies across the room, then heads into his kennel. But at this point, the man follows him into the cage. We've chosen to blur the video and cut the audio here, but we counted roughly a dozen punches. Many appear aimed at the dog's head for a video that lasts an excruciating one minute. The man detectives believe is behind this attack is 39-year-old Nicholas Prince. Nicholas Prince is a man who lives in Dunlap, Illinois, and the dog he savagely beat was a 13-month-old German Shepherd named Mika. The police became aware of the incident on August 1st, 2022, after Peoria County Animal Protective Services showed them the video. Luckily, the police took the abuse seriously and issued a warrant for his arrest. It didn't take long before Nicholas turned himself in, but don't think it was because he felt guilt. He turned himself in because he knew he was going to get caught. The video went viral, and his face wasn't blurred. Someone who knew him would eventually rat him out. And on top of that, there was already a warrant out for his arrest, for the violation of a protection order and a misdemeanor for a traffic violation. He turned himself in because he had few options left. Nicholas's reason for beating Micah is infuriating. On July 5th, Mika had destroyed her mom's $75 plant. Frustrated, Amanda's son, Mika's mom, took her downstairs and put her in her kennel. After Mika's mom went upstairs to clean the broken planter, Nicholas, her boyfriend at the time, came downstairs. That was when he began his brutal attack on Mika, hitting her, punching her head multiple times, and slamming her body against the wall. When Amanda heard Mika's cries, she ran downstairs to see Nicholas in the kennel. She yelled for him to stop, and he got mad at her. So, this part is a little bit confusing, because in another news article, Amanda states that she didn't see Nicholas hurting Mika, and if that's the case, I'm not sure why she was asking Nicholas to stop if she didn't see him doing anything. She must have known that Nicholas was doing something bad to Mika, because she was yelping. And why would Nicholas be so mad at Amanda for telling him to stop if nothing was going on? But in any case, Amanda said that Nicholas defended his actions, actions that she apparently didn't see, because Mika apparently bit him. Amanda didn't take Mika to the vet because she didn't see Mika acting strained or any signs of injury. Though she would later say that she wished she had done things differently, done something sooner, but she didn't because she was intimidated by Nicholas. Nicholas continued living with her until July 31st, 26 days after the incident. Amanda described her relationship with Nicholas as volatile, but not violent. He had never hurt her, her kids, or her pets. Though the things in her home weren't safe from him because he broke them. The relationship finally ended when Amanda suspected Nicholas of stealing her money. She had cameras installed throughout the house, so she was able to go back and look at her footage. Needing proof that he was stealing from her and evidence for an order of protection, she looked through her camera footage for July 31st. When she reviewed the footage, her suspicions were confirmed. He was stealing from her, and that was when she called the police. This is another confusing part because... 
It seems as though from the news articles, she saw both Nicholas stealing from her and him beating up Mika. But the reason she gives for calling the police was solely because of theft. So honestly, from just the articles, it seems like Amanda missed the ball in protecting Mika and making her a priority. She said that she made four or five reports, but only one was about Mika. On August 1st, Amanda received an emergency protective order. Originally, Amanda only showed the beating to two people. As to how the video went viral, Amanda doesn't know. After all, she was handling it privately, following all the right protocols, which involved submitting evidence of animal abuse to the police. But based on what she stated, probably one of the people she shared it with uploaded it onto the internet. An arrest warrant was issued for Nicholas for animal cruelty. Animal cruelty in Illinois is considered a misdemeanor. Only when a person is indicted for animal torture does it become a felony. According to Illinois law, animal torture is when a person without legal jurisdiction knowingly or intentionally tortures an animal. Torture means infliction of or subjugation to extreme physical pain, motivated by an intent to increase or prolong the pain, suffering, or agony of the animal. So within two days, Nicholas turned himself in and he was put in jail. Within a few days, he was released on a bond of $160. On August 11th, after he was indicted for animal cruelty, he violated the protection order protecting Amanda. Because he violated the protection order, a warrant was again issued for his arrest. But this time, it was related to felony animal torture. So how did it go from misdemeanor to felony? It seems as though because more information regarding how brutal the attack on Mika was, that the judge added the felony charge, which raised his bond to $25,000. While protesters were pleased that the bond was increased and that the court was taking the abuse more seriously, they were unhappy that Amanda still had custody over Mika. They wanted Mika out of Amanda's house. Even the breeder of Mika showed up to a protest to express doubt on Amanda's ability to care for Mika, saying, I know today some more charges were brought against him, and I want to make sure the charges are brought against the other owner. I think she deserves to be charged as well, and I think the dog should be taken at least to a foster home until she's put in a better home. Amanda, of course, disagrees with this sentiment and believes that she is taking great care of Mika. On September 27th, Nicholas was finally arrested. What his punishment will be is still unknown. So that's something we'll have to watch out for. But here are some consequences if he is convicted. According to Illinois law, in no event may the convicted person or anyone residing in his or her household be permitted to adopt or otherwise possess the forfeited animal or animals. The court additionally may order that the convicted person and persons dwelling in the household as the convicted person who conspired, added, or abetted in the unlawful act that was the basis of the conviction or who knew or should have known of the unlawful act may not own, harbor, or have custody or control of any other animals for a period of time that the court deems reasonable. In addition, people who commit felony animal torture may have a two to five year stint in prison. Thank you guys all for listening. This is season four's premiere. So thank you to returning listeners and welcome to new ones. As always, make sure you share the VSF podcast, rate and review the podcast, and wherever you listen to podcasts, email me anything you want me to cover at VSF period official period podcast at gmail.com and follow VSF's Instagram page, the period VSF period official. Also, make sure you check out handmade crochet dog and cat toys available on VSF's official website, the voice to speak forever.com. Thank you guys so much for listening, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Toodles!